Thank you. <laughs> Morning. Oh, I haven't got a clicker. It's all that hooting. In 1983, uh, when I was nine years old, I went to school in Tanzania, the International School of Tanganyika. Some of you may have worked there. In the 33 years since then, I have attended and worked at and visited countless other schools. And I, I've got to say, I'm worried. I'm not sure things are really changing. I'm also not sure things are changing in the outside world. If we look outside the bubble of our schools, which we have to, it's not pleasant viewing. We're still not very nice to each other. We still spend more money on killing than anything else. We're caught in a, a vortex of consumerism, of waste. We allow the people that made Agent Orange to grow our food for us. At the moment, also, we seem to be stuck in a period of self-obsession. Most worryingly for me, though, are the millions of people all over the world who hate their jobs, who go to work and count the hours until the end of the day who count the days until the end of the week. They're wishing their lives away. And we put them there. Since the idea of school first came along, I think we've lost our way. We've become very passive. We allow outside forces to tell us what school should be like. We allow outside forces to tell us what successful looks like. All that pressure has created molds. Schools are molds. You go from one school to another, they all look pretty much the same. They all smell the same and feel the same. Inside school, there's more molds. This is a mold, it's a classroom. We put kids in them every day and take them out. This is the mold for what we do to time in schools. The giant ice cube tray of learning with a little bit of fun at the end of the week, Sean. And our subjects can become molds too. I'm doing maths now. Next I'm going to do science. What we think is collaboration has become a mold that looks like this. Inevitably, of course, we're molds too. We're in the teacher mold. If we have some ambition, well, there's a nice little job description mold waiting for us to be squeezed into next. And it doesn't always pan out very well. Ultimately, of course, we're trying to squeeze students through a small number of doorways. And sadly, that means we're pushing out 18-year-old molds. We're pushing out people who are going to have to wait, in many cases, to find where their talents lie, to find what their passions truly are, to find out what exactly it is they want to offer to the world. Part of the problem here is this constant pursuit of improvement, this getting better and better and better and better and better. It's all wretch and no vomit, as Alan Watts says. It's got a kind of debilitating energy to it. But if we start to think about being just different instead of better, it's got a whole new energy to it. To do that, though, we're going to have to break out, we're going to have to break free of all of these molds. 
We're going to have to redefine the school experience. We're going to have to redefine what school means to students and to us. Now, there's lots of people here at Learning too, with plenty of ideas about how to do just that, learn from them over the next two days. But there's also people all over the world in small pockets who are doing it. We are more connected than ever. This is our time. If we can join the dots, then we can learn from each other, we can gain confidence from each other, we can gain strength from each other. Maybe then schools can reclaim their power, the power to shape lives, the power to create cultures and to define societies instead of the other way around. So metaphors are powerful. And the metaphor I'd like you to leave with is that of the mold. Please go back to where you work and look for all the ideas, the systems, and the people that have become molds that are holding us all back and break them. Thank you.